Hello folks, it's Mr Neil here. In this video I'm going to show you how to make a maze game in Microsoft Make Code Arcade. So I'm on the Make Code Arcade website and I'm going to click New Project and I'm going to give my maze game a name. Now you can be a bit more inventive with your name and we're going to click Create. When our game loads, we will have an on start block. And the first thing we're going to do is we are going to go and add in our player. So we're going to click on sprites and we're going to click set my sprite to sprite of kind player. We're then going to click on the wee grey box where we get this text editor. And in this text editor, we can draw our player character in a block form that we are going to play our game with. So if you give me a second, I will draw my character. Here is my wee character. So when I finish, I'm going to click the green done button, which is behind my head. And now we're going to make sure the player moves with the arrow key. So we're going to go into controller and we're going to drag the move my sprite with buttons out. And what that means is when our emulator loads, our wee person will move around with our buttons. It's quite difficult to see my person move because he's got black hair. So we're now going to go and change the background colour of our game space. For that, we're going to go into Scene and we're going to click Set Background Colour 2. I'm going to click on the wee grey box and I'm going to select my background colour. And when the emulator loads, my background colour will change. As I move around my space, I eventually lose my player character. So we're going to make sure that the camera or the view that we see follows the player character. So we're going to go into scene again and this time we're going to scroll down until we see camera and we're going to select the camera follow sprite block and drop that in. And that way the player will be able to, as we move the player, the camera will also move. So at the moment it doesn't look like anything happening because it's a big green area. We're now going to add in our background to our game. So we're going to go into Scene, and we're going to click Set Tile Map to, and then we're going to click on the grey area. And this is where we can build up our game level. Now you can use the preset tiles within uh, Make Code Arcade, or if you click on My Tiles, and then the plus, you can paint your own tiles the same way that you painted your own character. And you'll see that I've painted my own wall tile and I'm going to use this tile to build up my wall. So if you give me a minute, I'll go and do that. So I've built up my maze. You can see I've got a route through it from a start point all the way through to an end point. We're now going to add the walls to our game. So we're going to click this wall building tool and we're going to trace over our full maze or any area that our player will come in contact with. Now that I've traced over the maze, it's all red, so it means my player can't walk through it, I'm going to add in the start point and the end point. So I'm going to click on my tiles and I'm going to add in just a red tile and that will be where my player starts. And I'm going to click on that and I'm going to place the red tile here. And I'm then going to add another tile. I'm going to make this a green tile. And I'm going to place that at the end of the game. So we're then going to click on done. So you can see now my game space has loaded with my environment, but my player is in the middle of the game space and not down by the start point. To get him by the start point, we are going to go into scene and we're looking for the place my sprite on top of random block. I'm going to drag that in to our on start. And the block that we want them to start on is our red block. So we click that. And when the emulator loads, you'll see that our player has moved to our block and we can go all the way around our maze. At the moment when the player reaches the end, nothing happens. So let's build in that functionality. We're going to go into scene and we're going to bring out the on sprite of kind player overlaps on location block. And we're going to change the overlap to my ending tile, which is green. And what do we want to happen when the game's in? Well, we want some music. 
So I'm going to go into the music toolbox and we're going to play the badding sound. And we want to win the game. So I'm going to go into game. I'm going to pull out the game over block and slide it over to win. Now when my player goes over the green block, I win. So we've got a basic platformer. The only thing that could make it a little bit more challenging is if we add a timer in. So to add the timer in, we're going to go into the info toolbox and we are going to look for the start countdown block, which we're going to add into our on start. And now we will have 10 seconds to complete our game. If we think 10 seconds is enough, we can change that time and add it. So I'm going to go for 60 seconds which is a minute. So let's have a look at my finished game where my character has to race around the maze and try and reach the end. Am I going to achieve it within the minute? I don't know if I am. Okay. Yeah, plenty of time. Yay, there I go. I've won my game. So that's the basic platformer with a timer. Let's now have a look at some other features that we could add. We could add into our game some baddies and some baddies that we want our, our player to avoid. So to do that, we are going to find our set tile map block and we're going to tap on that and that will bring our tile map up. Now in my tiles, I have already created a baddie which I can place in my game space. You can place as many baddies as you want. And once they've done that, you can click on the done block. So we've got our baddies and we need to add lives to our game so that every time we touch a baddie, we will lose a life. So we're going to go into the info panel and we're going to find the set life to block and put it into our own start block. Now I think I put five baddies in there. So I'm going to give my player six points or six lives to begin with. We're now going to go into scene and we're going to pull out the on we're now going to go into scene and we're going to pull out the on sprite of kind player overlaps block. And we want it to overlap the baddie tile. We're going to go into info and we're going to say change life by minus one. We could also play a sound as well. Let's go for the wah 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 sound. And lastly, we want the baddie to disappear because if the baddie doesn't disappear, when I make contact with it and maintain that contact, I will instantly die. So we're going to go into scene and we are looking for the set tile at location. And we're going to drag that in. And we're just going to drag the location from the top into our set until it snaps in. Let's have a look at what that now looks like in our game. So our player races round. When they touch our baddie, we lose a life and we get the whap sound. And if I touch all the baddies, the game will be over. So that's us added in baddies to our game. Let's know how we could add in points. So we want our player to go round our game space and gain points. So again, we'll get click on our tile map and I need to add in a object that the player is going to collect. So let's maybe make a purple diamond. So I've finished my purple diamond and I'm now going to click on done. And I'm going to place the purple diamond at different places throughout my game. You can put as many as you want. And then I'm going to click on done. I'm then going into the scene toolbox and I'm going to pull out another on sprite of kind overlap block and this time we want to overlap the diamond and what is it we want to happen we want to gain points so we need to actually go and add points initially so we're going to go into info and we're going to set score to zero and we're going to put that into our on start block we're then going to go in to our on sprite of kind overlaps and we're going to go into info and we're going to say change score by one. Let's also play a sound. So let's this time go for the power up sound. And again, we want this set at location block. So I'm actually just going to click on that, right click on it and select duplicate. 
and pull it in. So let's have a look at what that looks like in our game. Our player starts, we're racing around the game space, we lose lives, and when we touch the gems, we gain points. So that is a really good maze game that I have built. Why don't you go and see what you can build? 